Hey guys, this is UC from White Trade Price. It is September 18th, about uh, midday afternoon. So let's go through some of the charts that we follow and trade. And before we get in there, uh, I know a few of you asked, uh, and I've showed that again as well, uh, the way I've laid out my charts, right? Um, Annie and I both, we like to have about 10 to 12 charts uh, readily accessible that we can look at with our key price levels on it and along with the options that we want to trade. So uh, again, I don't trade Forex or futures that much. So we're just gonna use these uh, tabs on the Thinkorswim platform for multiple tickers, right? So I have on this Forex trader, for example, SQ, BA, NVIDIA, and Roku, and then the respective options. And I can quickly change to puts and calls by just, you know, putting P or C and uh, changing the strike price and all that stuff. So you can change all that pretty quickly right here, okay? Uh, futures tab, I have Amazon, Shop, Tesla, and MRNA, okay? And in the pairs tab here, I have Netflix, UPST, BNTX, and GS. And of course, I can switch between BNTX or if I want to trade, for example, Microsoft, I can just quickly pull that up as well. But usually the ones that I we have to trade, we just kind of have those uh, in front of our platform, you know, here in the screen all the time. And for active trade, here is where I use for my scalping uh, just because it's just I need a bigger size charts and it's easy for me to drag and drop I have my templates saved here so for example if I'm looking to trade Amazon right and let's get into a lower time frame uh, and let's say if I want to trade it at 34.45.7 that's a key level so what I'll do is I'll just take a pick a template here uh, 100 usually I trade with 100 shares uh, and then what I can do is I can just quickly put the order here and I can just adjust the order to wherever I want quickly and it adjusts the bracket for me. So, uh, so yeah, that's a cool feature that TOS has and it's just easy, for example. And then once the order gets executed, I can even move my, uh, my uh, you know, profit or stop loss orders as well. So it's just an easy way for me to uh, do all that stuff. Okay. Let us uh, review some of the charts that we like to review. So weekly chart, Amazon looks okay. Structure wise, yes, a little bearish, but then it closed towards the top end of its weekly range and just kind of, you know, uh, holding that level uh, nicely above 34, 45 area, right? You know, that's like the midpoint of his previous week's bar. In the daily, if you look at it, it was sort of coming down in a controlled way. But then this midday, uh, midweek, last week, we had a nice hammer bar and a, not really a big follow through to the upside, but just kind of holding that 34.45, right? So now if you look at it, this 34.98 is a big number that it we, that bulls would like to kind of see the price action get above because then the uh, uh, next level up above is 3530 area which is like the next uh, major resistance of course we have uh, intraday resistance uh, uh, before that but 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 that's the bigger one right so in the lower time frame that's how it looks it's, you know it's gonna get caught out of this down channel and now trying to make a higher low as long as it holds this three four four five region and kind of tries to get back above uh, you know bulls are okay from that perspective and of course we have our levels here uh, so we'll these again we don't have to look at these like that because these are like really uh, for day, day trading or just when we are actively trading throughout the day okay all right let's look at Apple everyone's favorite uh, two big bearish trend bars right uh, kind of these two bars the last two weeks took out all the action here that we had in the previous weeks and kind of back in this this congestion zone chop zone whatever you want to call it in the daily time frame we just kind of closed below this recent uptrend line uh, so a lot of people were hoping that we somehow will kind of see some move to the upside because we had this uh sort of this buying pressure building here right with bottom wicks but since as per the setup it did not trigger because usually 
when you see these bottom breaks, the setup says that you would only go long above the high of the previous, uh, the last hammer bar that you have. And we did not see the price get above that. It was an inside day. We got a little flush to the downside. And in the down uh, uh, lower time frame, this is how the channel looks like. So now if I were to kind of look for a bounce trade or let's say a, a dip buy, you know, the area that I'm targeting uh, or that I think can work is this one right here, right? 142.6, we have multiple touch points here, right? So that can be at least a first touch bounce, a uh, little up, and then if you want to go back down or go back up, we'll see how the market does that. But that's how I would, uh, I would play it, okay? Let's go to Nvidia. I know it was in the daily time frame. It's still flagging, right? Yes, it's still in this sort of flag range. Yes, it closed the week towards the low end of its flag range, and bullish bars are not seeing any upside follow through. So that's why, uh, you know, this 224.1 level, right? That's where the resistance lies, right? That's where. The price is having a hard time getting above so once we see a move above that yes we can you know kind of uh, target this upside range of this flag and then only once above that we can see the flag breakout on the downside uh, if this area does not hold right you know this 219 217 area then the next level down is 215 and then maybe on an extension 210 and the reason i say 210 is because that was sort of uh the resistance on the way up right right here right here and then we broke out above uh, uh that level right here okay and so that means if we get here it could be a nice level to look for a dip buy or at least a bounce trade a nice good significant bounce because it is also an uptrend line and also uh, an important key level that you can kind of target on the downside for or to play a bounce or if you're playing puts uh, then you can target this level as your first target okay okay here is tesla weekly time frame still in a nice up channel uh bearish bars really don't see any downside right uh the only bearish bars on a in a weekly time frame the recent ones are this one and this one right just by by uh, the shape of the bar right not necessarily from location perspective right so again we don't see any bearish close after seeing those bearish bars in the weekly time frame now if i go into uh the daily time frame still everything is intact a little slow right because we had this chop zone right here price was just not going anywhere but it held this this 740 745 level nicely right and on the top side the 763 is the level to watch that bulls would like to see some upside above to kind of target the 780, 781 number. Okay. Uh, and if I drill into a lower time frame, uh, let's say a 30 minute time frame, you can see we're banging against the 763 number, right? That's, that's, uh, oops, that's the, that's the level right here that, that every time price goes there, it kind of, gets rejected so unless we get above this one right this zone right here uh, it's tough for bulls to uh, kind of see any higher prices once above that sure yes let's see and uh, you know short people more people are, that are short the stock will probably cover and we can see some nice uh, rally on the upside okay Roku daily chart uh, let's look at weekly actually before we go to the daily so weekly a little bottom wick but a weak one right nothing too exciting nothing too big still a lower low and a lower high in the weekly time frame and below the trend line uh, like this long term up trend line that you can see so that but it is coming to a point where we can see some uh, some bounces right some bounce or some support coming in and the area that I'm targeting or kind of consider is like this one right this one right here so that can be a good bounce area 290s 292 288 kind of a zone uh yes we have a double top but that can be a good little bounce right here if the price gets there and now if i drill down to a lower time frame uh you know this is where we sort of uh you know made a little bear flag 
out of this thing and now we're kind of continuing the path down so um, i think this is this is a good area to target on further downside to get bullish on this name uh i would would like to see price get above the last swing high right uh, so the swing high is probably not this one and this one right the price got this and like this so this becomes a swing high. once we get above that sure i can see some bottoming pattern but again nothing too aggressive on the upside sure we can see a nice bounce above 324 like if i get into a lower time frame you can see probably it's it's this channel right it's this channel that it's been sort of in right now we're on the sideways so yes we can see a move towards 331 330 but that's where the resistance comes in right so as you can see this was support so this should become resistance at least on the first try on the upside yes if we break above that i would like to see this one 345 is on the upside once we get a close above that sure i would say okay yes the trend has changed we have some buyers but before that nah, it's still weaker uh chart uh relatively speaking when you are looking at other names as well okay let's look at another ticker let's go to mrna i know i like to scalp that name a lot mm, weekly time frame yeah i mean still not really an inside week but but okay decent uh, a little bearish but nothing too alarming from weekly perspective of the daily chart uh here's sort of the channel uh you know we were like up coming down we held this area right here for 11 for 15 area made a bottom wick on friday so that's a good one i know any played uh, puts first and then she also played calls i think from the 406 407 area so this is how it looks like in the lower time frame like 30 minute time frame nice channel uh you know this was a good resistance on the way up and now it's becoming a support zone 411 that's where we saw a bounce on friday so giving up that yes we can target the lower end the channel bottom the 388 all that stuff that's where i would expect some bounce from or on the upside if we break to the upside 448 is the bigger resistance to uh, overcome before we can see some more buyers stepping into the snake okay all right square weekly chart uh seeing some buyers stepping in here at 245 246 uh nice good looking sort of nice hammer bar in the weekly time frame as well uh volume is not that big so that's a little alarming but nothing too bad so we are we were at the channel bottom here right that's where we saw sort of the green box zone was so we saw some nice bounce from there but it did not or it could not manage to get above 259 right that's like the, sort of the midpoint of the previous week's bar so once we see above that sure we can target the up uh, trend line of this channel and once above 267 you know i would say yes it's trying to break out and getting more stronger uh, on the downside if we are to roll over of course 246 becomes the first support anything below that we'll again see this channel uh uh, uh trend line and also this this 233 becomes the support and below that is 221 uh hopefully we don't get there but looks like it wants to touch this uh trend line on the upside because it was pretty strong on friday we'll see how that one goes okay okay this is a ba boeing weekly chart so far it's dominated by these 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 you know weekly bearish bars and then any uh multiple weeks of uh bullishness we see but it's it's, it's not getting above its last uh, uh you know significant swing high uh so basically in this picture over here we're unable to get above this swing high this one this one right so that means uh it's still in a higher time frame uh downtrend now if i get into the lower time frame for this one i could show you that the, the, the areas that i'm targeting or the one that it needs to get above for a bullish move would be to it's this 217 right so it's right here this is the box so if you get above that this is the zone on the lower side this is the zone so let's see which way it breaks above is 217 and and, and, and below this is 210 below 
you can target this 205 region but this is a good level to sort of swing trade as well uh, if I look at the weekly chart we're still in this channel but there's a lot of support here in this 193 195 region if we get there right that's where I would like to and also a channel support in the weekly time frame but this could be a good nice green box buy zone for a swing trade okay this is a chart of Goldman Sachs in the weekly time frame we are at actually a nice spot if you look at the weekly time frame right because uh, the way it is shaping up is that this was the resistance area and now we're getting very close to that 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 zone right here so this could be a good uh, uh, dip by pullback zone whatever you want to call it uh, but looks like we will have some you know maybe downside but then not a whole lot and it will it will hold this level for at least one more week and and then you know can give us a good good uh, trading opportunity let me get into a lower time frame this is what it looks like right some heavy selling here in the last uh, few days here uh no upside at all anything that if, if it would close uh, if it would open strong we would just see sellers step in and just kind of push it all the way down and this is where the gap is right in the chart right here so that means if we go down here and we fill the gap 384.5 385 that could be a nice bounce trade right for us so we will look for that uh, uh, setup to see if it kind of uh, uh, plays out okay uh, if I go into a lower time frame you can see this channel is sort of nice in the way that it's 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 you know it's kind of following this this channel right every time it goes there it gets rejected so far we couldn't do it so if we open up a little bit on, on Monday and then goes back below 388.8 <laughs> so if it goes below 388.8 we can target this gap fill area and then definitely flip to long if it gives up then this channel bottom is my target for a bounce play or for uh, a short I would target this on the downside uh, uh, to take profits uh, to, you know. so yeah so that is how you can trade this name and let's look at the last one is uh, I believe it was sharp I think yes let's look into the weekly time frame again uh this 1430 level has provided good support previously right uh that's where we saw this big outside bullish bar as well but so far any bounces have just been very weak nothing too aggressive but yes it's holding this 1430 30 right in the weekly time frame anything below that the bigger support is not until 1312 so that's almost hundred dollars down uh, if I drill down to a lower time frame, it is trying to show some strength, but nothing again too big, nothing too exciting. Yes, it did come out of its recent down channel uh, and gave us uh, two like multi uh, double bottoms kind of a thing, right? So right now, if I were to read this chart, this is sort of it. It's what it looks like to me. It's kind of like maybe I had it shoulders. Oops, it's too messy. Uh, erase that something like that it can build with this being the neckline 1520 so on the upside above 4096 yes i can target this neckline as my target anything below 1475 the chart remains neutral to sideways because uh that's how it's just been uh, kind of giving just intraday ranges and intraday moves and it's not running right now so that's why you have to be technical overall uh trading uh, these days because you know it's only a few names running not not a whole lot okay hopefully you guys like this little video and hope to talk to you guys soon and have a good rest of your weekend okay somebody's calling me